Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the brand new Photos app on your iPhone 11. For those of you who still have an iPhone XR or XS, or even phones dating all the way back to the iPhone 6, you can actually update your operating system to the latest iOS 13 and take advantage of all of these features I'm about to explain today. I'm gonna to take you through how to edit a still photo and how to edit your videos. And incidentally, editing videos is a completely new feature of this brand new Photos app. Previously, you had to download video editing software to perform any significant edit on your videos. Now you can do it all right from within this app. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and check out how to edit photos and video on iOS. 13. So to get started, let's tap on the Photos app. The first thing you'll notice that if you're coming from a previous generation of iPhone is there's a completely new layout. If you tap on the first icon on the bottom left hand corner, you can view your photos in years, months, days, or all of your photos. And each one of these has a really nice way of organizing your photos where it will show you a group of thumbnails and then it will highlight a feature video which will actually play in the thumbnail view and it can also highlight a featured photo. So a very nice way of navigating between your photos. If you tap on the next option, it will highlight your featured photos and then as with the previous versions, you can tap on the albums icon to access different albums that you may have created. Speaking of which, if you'd like to create a new album, in which you can organize your photos, tap on the plus button on the top left-hand corner of the screen, and then select new album. Give your album a name. And now you can proceed to select the photos you would like to appear in that album. And if at any stage you'd like to add more photos to that album, simply scroll to the photo you wanna add tap on the icon on the bottom left hand corner and then scroll down till you get to the add to album section, tap on it and add that photo to that new album. So really that's all I wanted to show you in relation to the layout of your photos. Let's go in now and edit one of our photos. I've got an architectural image that I shot at Federation Square here in Melbourne. I'm going to tap on that photo and then tap on the edit option on the top right hand corner. Now we're in the photo editing mode, and as you can see, a completely fresh and new layout. So the photo appears in the top section of the screen, and we now have a range of icons, which we can scroll through just below the photo. The first one is an option to auto expose, and that will automatically determine the best possible exposure. It will increase your highlights, decrease the shadows, etc., until it gives you what it thinks is the best option for your photo. But sometimes it's better to ignore that and actually apply those edits manually. So let's go on to the next option where we can adjust the exposure. If we slide to the right, it will decrease the exposure of the image, making it darker. And if we slide to the left, it will increase it making it much brighter. So we slide until we find a point that we're happy with and we'll leave it there. Let's tap the next option, which is brilliance. This tends to increase the overall impact of the image, helping it cut through. The next option is highlights. Highlights can be used to reduce blown out areas in a photo. So if we have a look at the sky area of this photo, it's quite blue in most areas, but it's a little bit blown out on the top mid section. So if I scroll slightly to the left, you'll see that it darkens that sky and reduces some of the highlights in the image. The next option is shadows, which does the opposite. By adjusting this, we can either increase or decrease the exposure in the shadow area. So let's have a look at the bottom of the building where the signage appears, Deacon Building. Again, we can use the scroller below to go left or right to increase or decrease the shadow areas. The next option is contrast, which can help make the image punch out further, increase or decrease. We can then adjust the overall brightness. Next option is black point. This will introduce more black into the image, again, giving it a bit more contrast and helping it punch out a little bit further. And the next one is saturation. We can either desaturate it by, again, scrolling our finger to the right. We can go completely to black and white if we go all the way to the end, or we can scroll left 
and we can increase the color saturation. The next option is vibrance is kind of similar to saturation and that can either increase or decrease the amount of color in the image. The next option is warmth, which can help produce a much warmer image or cooler image depending on which way you slide. So if I slide left, I get a much warmer image, which is akin to shooting in direct sunlight. And if I scroll to the left, it becomes colder or more blue in tone, which is more like shooting in an interior or at different times of day. So depending on your personal preference, what type of lighting you're wishing to replicate, you can adjust the warmth accordingly. The next option is tint. This can change the overall tint of the image. So you can slide left or right to get a different result there. The next option is sharpness to improve the sharpness of the image or decrease it. Then we get definition, which is similar to sharpness. It helps give definition to the image and generally make it look sharper. And then we get the option to reduce noise in an image, which you might find more prevalent in images that are shot during the night. So we can increase or decrease the amount of noise reduction. And then finally, we get an option to apply a vignette. A vignette is where we darken the corners of the image. So if I scroll left, I get dark corners around the edges of the photo. If I scroll right, I get white corners. That's all the settings you've got to adjust the actual look of your image. And then below that, we get some further options if we tap on the icon next to image control, which is our filter option. This allows us to take advantage of some preset filters that Apple have provided you, very much like the ones you would find in Instagram or similar apps. So we can scroll along and see the different filters that we can apply, which all have their own unique look and feel. So for those of you who aren't interested in manually editing your images and you wanna take advantage of a preset, this would be the option for you. We can go into dramatic looks. We can also go into black and white of various combinations and looks, which really is a very quick and easy way of getting a good result with your images. The next option is the crop tool, which allows us to crop into our images. We can also flip our images and rotate them. If we look at the icons on the top left-hand corner of the screen, the first one flips it horizontally and the next one allows us to rotate the image. Now, if you have a look on the top right-hand corner, there is a square icon with multiple squares within it. If we tap on that, that gives us some predefined cropping options. So we can start with the original crop. We can go into a portrait crop, horizontal. We can go into freeform where we can pick up the corner of the crop bars and pretty much create any shape we like. We can select the square option, which will automatically apply a square crop over the image. The next one is 16 by nine, which is widescreen for video. 10, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 5, 3, and 3, 2. So lots of different cropping options there. If I go back to the original or free form, as I mentioned earlier, we can pretty much get any crop we like on the image. If you wanna move the image within it, you can pinch and zoom. And the final thing to look at in the crop tool area is the straighten tool and the tilt shift options, which all appear as circular icons just below the preview image. If you wanna rotate the image, tap on the first icon above the scroll bar and you can move it left or right to rotate your image. If you wanna tilt your image vertically, which can be very useful for architectural photography when you wanna straighten out those converging lines, you can tap on the middle icon and scroll left and right to straighten out the lines in the architectural image. And if you want to tilt left and right, you can tap on the next icon. So that's pretty much all there is to editing a photo using the new Photos app on your iPhone. Now we're going to quickly have a look at how we can do the same on a video file. So I'm going to scroll down to my library and pick one of my video files. I've got a shot of the Nixon smartwatch, which I shot for one of my recent review videos. I'm now gonna select that image and tap on the edit button on the top right-hand corner. And now we go into the edit mode of the video. The first thing you'll notice is a timeline on the bottom of the screen below the video thumbnail. 
you'll notice a bar in yellow. If we tap on the left, we can bring the start point or the end point of the video in and tapping on the right of the yellow bar allows us to bring the out point of the video to where we want it to end. So everything inside that yellow box will be the final video. And if we press done, it will save down the edited clip. But before we do that, let's have a look at what else we can do with your video in this brand new version of the Photos app in iOS 13. If we tap on the next icon along, we can adjust all of those parameters that I showed you in the previous section where we edited a still photo. So again, we can apply an auto filter or we can go to the next option to adjust the exposure of our video. We can go into the highlights and shadows. We can adjust the contrast of the image, the brightness, the black point where we introduce more black into the image. We can increase or decrease saturation and do the same for vibrance. We can add more warmth to the image or reduce the warmth and make it cooler. We can change the tint of the image. We can also adjust the sharpness of the video, the definition, and we can reduce noise. And finally, we can also apply a vignette to the edges of the image. So as I mentioned, pretty much every editing feature that's available for a still photo is now available to edit your videos, which has been a really great advancement in this iOS 13 version of the app. And once again, if we tap on the next icon, we can select from a predefined range of filters, very similar to Instagram that we can actually use on our video clips. So we've got a number of different styles here from vivid to warm to vivid, cool, dramatic, dramatic, warm, dramatic, cool, mono, silver tone, and noir for black and white. And finally, we also get access to the cropping tool, which allows us to flip the image left and right using the icon on the top left-hand corner, rotate our video, select from a different range of crops, including horizontal and portrait, square, 16, 9, 10, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 5, 3, 3, 2, etc. And additionally, we can go into the freeform crop tool and crop to any size, which is pretty amazing to be able to do this natively inside the Photos app. As I mentioned earlier, we've never been able to do this before. So pretty much all the tools you need to edit an individual video clip right here in the Photos app. Now keep in mind, this is not a comprehensive video editor such as iMovie, which allows you to edit multiple clips, add voiceover, sound effects, music, and perform complex video editing tasks. So if you actually want to do that, you can go into the App Store and download the iMovie app, which is a free download. And with that, you can perform much more comprehensive video edits. If you're interested, I've actually completed a tutorial on that and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to put them in the comments box below. If you'd like to suggest any content for future videos, I'm also open to suggestions there. So feel free to put them in the comments box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.